Well, a growing number of countries have evacuated diplomats and citizens from Sudan's capital as the fighting between the army and paramilitary forces enters its 10th day. More than 400 people have died in the conflict so far. Andrew Harding with our partners at the BBC is following the story for us from Johannesburg. Uh, Andrew, good morning. Um, so we've been hearing about these evacuations uh, pretty much over the weekend. What more do we know about the evacuation missions and, and how they're being safely conducted? Good morning. It's a pretty chaotic scene right the way across Sudan right now. In the capital Khartoum, we know that some foreign delegations and some foreign nationals have been making their way to an airstrip just north of the Sudanese capital and getting flights out, particularly organized by the French, by the Germans and others. We know there's a big United Nations convoy that's been making its way by land up to the Red Sea into a big port there where there are ships available and there are also some airlifts there too. Other convoys have been making their way north across the desert towards Egypt. Some people are making their way to the east, to Ethiopia, others to the south, to South Sudan. So a huge amount of movement on these roads. But Sudan right now, very, very dangerous. A lot of roadblocks, a lot of fighting, and a lot of Sudanese and other nationalities desperately looking for somewhere they can head to to find some kind of safety. Yeah, while those working, you know, uh, as, as diplomats uh, at least have some sort of um, pathway to get out, the impression that I get is for everyone else, they're kind of making it up as they go along. Um, we know that there are American citizens there. Right now there isn't a particular way to get them out. Uh, do we know how many American citizens are still in Sudan and what options are available to them? We're hearing a number of about 16,000 American citizens, some of those dual nationals, so they may be Sudanese, uh, who prefer to stay and who are looking after property, looking after relatives. We keep hearing people saying, we can't leave our homes, we have elderly or sick family, um, and we don't want to abandon them. So a lot of people having to make very, very difficult decisions. The British government, for instance, right now saying to their nationals, stay where you are, stay put. The roads are simply too dangerous. We're going to try and organize more evacuations but no one's promising when that could be. And one of the main reasons for that is despite more than a week of international diplomatic pressure on the two warring parties in this conflict, there's been no real agreement on humanitarian ceasefires or any kind of humanitarian corridor to allow people to get out safely from places like Khartoum. And there is limited information coming out of Sudan. I can't imagine that closing these diplomatic services will help that in any way. What will the impact be of all these countries closing their diplomatic services? Well, the fear is that it's going to make things a lot worse, that without foreigners and foreign diplomats trying to keep an eye on what's going on and having those direct links with the warring parties, that those soldiers, those generals, those teams of, of fighting groups are going to simply feel less restrained. And a lot of people worry that what started as a power struggle between two generals is at risk of spreading and, for instance, starting to target civil society activists, people who are trying to push Sudan towards a democracy, a democracy that the generals and the military are denying them. Yes, though they had promised that that's exactly what they were working towards. Um, Andrew, thank you very much.